Yo, 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 what up with it? It's the homie Mac, man. Each one teach one. Reporting live from the Dogon, Dogon, you know what it is. Uh, yeah, real quick. Um, some of y'all, I guess, still missed the episode or didn't get the memo when I uh, told told you guys the, the symbolism behind this flag behind me. This is the uh, African American culture flag. See, 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 see. Um, it's not a Trinidadian flag. Somebody thought I was I was Trini. Uh, salute to my Trini massive, my Trini folks. Much love to them. But no, this is the uh, African American history culture flag. This is our flag. I'm ADOS, FBA, ADOS, ADOS, American Descendant of Slavery, FBA, Foundation of Black American. Those terms to me can be used interchangeably. But yeah, it is what it is, homie. Um, yeah, but if this is another session of. Uh, Mac minutes, and you know there's been a lot of hype. Uh, Keefe D just got arrested. Keefe D was uh, one of the people who was considered to work in concert with Tupac's assassination. Um, so he's he's been uh, he's on tri uh, what he just had his he's been indicted. Um, apparently he was not able to 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 uh, garner legal counsel, so he has a public defender defending him. He's been charged with murder. I believe it's first degree murder. So we will see what becomes of that. I think uh, it's gonna get very interesting. Me personally, I feel like KVD is quite possibly a fall guy. We all know that Tupac was under FBI surveillance. He was a child of uh, a Black Panther. You know, his mother was a Black Panther. Tupac was uh, very revolutionary in his music, in his context. I felt like uh, he did the rah rah stuff um, for entertainment. What did Pac say? My, when addressing the mass public, my attitude was fucking because motherfuckers love it to be a soldier. I just think he he knew that he knew that entertained people, but there was so much more depth uh, to Tupac's art and his music. Uh, R.I.P. Tupac Shakur. But yeah, I was uh, at the barber shop yesterday, and I was speculating. The homies were chopping it up. We were talking about the situation with Keefe D, uh, Death Row. Bad Boy, um, the, the, what else did we talk about? We talked about how somebody had made the argument Tupac was wrong for swinging on Orlando Anderson. Tupac was wrong for fighting. And my response was, you know what? Or, or Orlando, or, to, to who it makes, you know, somebody, some, some of you guys may not know, Orlando Anderson is actually one of the guys that was, uh, well, he was not convicted, but it was speculated that he actually murdered Tupac Shakur, that he was a trigger man. Honestly, I don't know who did it. <laughs> At this point, I don't know who did it. We just know a white Cadillac pulled, pulled beside the uh, the Beamer that uh, Pac and Suge were in, and that's all she wrote. Uh, Suge said he's not, it's not his job to try to solve crimes, so he's not giving up any information. It is what it is. Uh, but yeah, back to the original, uh, the, the question that was posed at the barbershop, or the statement that was made at the barbershop. I get it. Um, Tupac should have been protected. Tupac should not have been a frontline soldier. But Pac's energy, Pac was a warrior. Uh, imagine trying to tell Tupac to stand down. We know, you know, it's, it's been rumored, I don't know, some people deny it, but I've heard even more people say it was true that there was a bounty on the death row chain. So at the Lakewood Mall, uh, I believe it was, uh, can't, I can't remember, remember the guy's name. It was Trayvon, can't remember his last name. Trayvon, uh, apparently he got jumped at the Lakewood Mall um, and they took his death row chain. Apparently there was like a bounty on the death row chain. So Pac being militant, this is an act of war. Y'all took the homie's chain. This represents us, we're a family. And I know people want to say, Trayvon Lane, I believe, yeah. And, and people, Trayvon Lane is the guy who uh, I was speaking of who got, uh, they took his death row chain, his pendant, well, his chain. Um, and the thing is, some people want to say, oh, Pac wasn't a gangster, he wasn't yada, yada, yada. But from, from what the homies in Compton have told me, Pac was initiated into Ma Pac Rule by Tray Trayvon Lane. Like, this man had to put him on. Um, should he have been put on? Eh, probably not. But, but the bottom line is, 
gang culture is so infectious. If you ever lived in California, Southern California, but I mean, gang culture is not relegated just to LA, but it's very infectious. Like if you run with a group of people, you foment an identity. Like you, you become not so much a monolith, but you become one. Y'all roll together, your family. And I, I feel like, you know, gang culture is really nothing more than a hyper tribal, it's tribalism. You know, so we know Death Row Records was Ma Paru, Ma Paru and Ludus Park Paru primarily. And so we know that Trayvon Lane, his chain got to, and we know that, uh, who was it? Orlando Anderson, he actually was only like 19, just turned 20. He was at the fight, MGM, at the MGM Grand, at the, uh, at the um, yeah, after the fight. And they saw him, I guess Trayvon or somebody was like, hey, that's the dude who took the chain. So what did Pac do? Pac was the first one, walked up on Orlando Anderson, swung on him. Should Pac have done that? Uh, you can't, <laughs> I'll say no, but I understand. It was an act of war. You took the homie chain, you shitting on my flag, you shitting on death row. Uh, we the row, we the untouchable death row. Uh, we gotta get, I gotta get that get back, right or wrong. I think that was his paradigm. The thing is, the guy that he walked up and swung on was a hitter, was a money maker, was a shooter, was that had a rap. <laughs> like Orlando Anderson, from what people tell me, was one of the ones. He wasn't, you know, he wasn't no slouch. And, you know, the thing is, when you're dealing with the industry, when you're dealing with uh, music and just pop culture in general, that is different from street culture. <laughs> People talk about street culture and their music, but when it comes to street culture itself, different rules come into play. And uh, essentially this was this was when Pac swung on Orlando Anderson, that was an act of war. And I want to say they stomped him out. They stomped Orlando Anderson out. They actually, someone had actually kicked his shoulder out of his socket. They really put paws on him. Um, Suge Knight ended up breaking his probation, had to go to jail because of this, what happened at the MGM Grand. But yeah, so moving along, because of what happened, Orlando Anderson is thinking, okay, I'm Southside Compton Crip, these dudes are from Ma Paru, Ludus Park Paru. Okay, this is gang shit now. Tupac ain't just no rapping ass nigga. Okay, you, you came to me with some gang banger energy, homie. So he's thinking we gotta get some get back. What was the get back? Uh, pull up on pull up on Pac and Suge. Apparently they went. The, the plan was to meet them at six to get their get back at Club Six Six Two in Las Vegas, and they waited. They waited. Pac and Pac never showed up. And as they were leaving, they heard some girls yell Tupac, 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 and Tupac I guess was out. Um, you know, stunting out, out outside the window of the car. So uh, Orlando Anderson and them they double back follow him and then the rest is history um again i i think Pac should have been a protected but at the same time how you tell a dude like Pac to stand down he's a warrior i do believe if if Pac never swung with orlando anderson uh his his time in vegas would have been totally different but i think Pac was loyal Pac was very militant. Pac was like, we're family. You cross the family. So in turn, there has to be a uh, reprisal. I got to get my get back. And that's what happened. It's unfortunate. And the thing that's so wild about this, everybody that was in the car, who, who was it? Uh, Orlando Anderson, Keefe D, and I can't remember the other gentleman's name. They, uh, all of them are dead except for Keefe D. So really, this the... <laughs> This, from what, yeah, from what I was told, uh, Orlando Anderson got murdered at a uh, car wash in Compton. You know, uh, it's, it's unfortunate that gang culture became uh, infused with business, music, the music industry. But at the same time, when it comes to hip hop, hip hop uh, is the voice of the streets. So it, it, it's, I would say by default, there's gonna be a symbiosis between street culture and hip hop. They're, they're pretty much tantamount in a lot of ways. But yeah, I, I do feel like, you know, 
I wish somebody could have intervened and been like, Pac, we got this, homie. Just go. Just go handle your, you know, y'all take Pac somewhere else, but we're going to get this get back right now. I wish that's what, I, I think if that, if that had went, if, if it had went down like that, I really think the assassination of Vegas wouldn't happen. I do hear a lot of theories. Um, you know, the FBI was involved. Keefe D, D was just a fall guy. I don't know, but I don't, <laughs> I don't put it past them because we know that uh, the FBI can be very nefarious. The FBI has um, planned political assassinations. And we do know Pac was uh, very militant and was essentially trying to unite gang culture and politicize them. You know, he said, you know, if I can sell nine million records, I can get nine million votes. So that's something to think about. Pop was a threat to the power structure. Uh, he had the personality, he had the money, he had the charisma to, to foment a movement. I would say something that was very powerful. I would say up, uh, up to par with the, Mar with, the Mar with the Malcolm X or Martin Luther King or Huey Newton. Just my thoughts. But it's the homie Mac, man. Each one teach one piece of love. Signing out from the Dogon, Dogon, Dogon. I'm out.